Hi, I'm Mrs. Rivera and I'm here to talk to you about ECE 1010. So as you know, it's a Yukon course and we begin the class every single day with independent reading. All right, so you will get to pick whatever book you want to read and you'll read for 20 minutes and we'll do that every single day in class. We do that because it's important to know yourself as a reader in order to discover yourself as a writer. All right, which is the next big, big, big thing that we do in this class is we learn to write papers the proper way using literature to introduce your big topic. So for instance, we read, we're going to be reading a lot of nonfiction pieces, starting with memoirs, and you will, together as a class, we will draw up a list of the big ideas that are represented in there. And then you will use those big ideas to introduce topics for your papers. All right, so writing is taught in a very studio type kind of way where you work at your own pace uh, and you work on the areas that you need to get stronger in. All right, we also do a project where you will uh, write and produce a trailer for your book and then we will enter it in Skills 21. So it's a really great class and I hope that you join us. Bye bye. Hi. I'm Mrs. Rivera and I'm here to talk to you about ECE English 1011 or Secrets and Lies. That's the title of the course. And we will be reading a lot of short stories, taking a look at different uh, literature where people have either lied or have kept secrets from each other. And the point of that is to bring out the bigger ideas in each piece of literature and then using those bigger ideas to write papers. So. Very much like 1010, we, as a class, we create a list of topics that are represented, bigger topics that are represented in each piece of literature. And then when it comes time for you to write a paper, you choose one of those and you use the short story or the poem or whatever it was that we read as a means to introduce the bigger idea. All right, so it's a very studio based type of class where you in a way work on your own pace, uh, we all do a series of mini lessons on different aspects of writing and you just learn to write a proper paper. Another thing that we do is Reader's Workshop, which is actually how we start the day. So you'll come in and you will read for 20 minutes and you'll read whatever you want to read. If you pick up a book and you don't like it, you can abandon it and pick up another one. Because as adults, that's really what we do. All right, so you get to discover yourself as a reader and as a writer because that's very, very important. Um, what else can I tell you about this class? It's really great. We have a wonderful time. You do one big project, which is to write and produce a public service announcement for your book, which we do enter in Skills 21. So I hope you join us to learn about people's secrets and lies. Hi, I'm Jessica Alvarado. I am the instructor for UConn EC English 1010 and 1011 here in aerospace. Um, I just want to take the moment to explain a little bit about what that requires of you in case you're interested in it. UConn English 1010 is more of a nonfiction reading course. It focuses on pro-con arguments and heavily on debate. Um, you also have a lot of multimodal assignments, but it is heavy on reading and it is heavy on writing. So if English is not your forte, this may not be the course for you. I would recommend for you to take regular English 11 at that point. Um, for 1011 it is more of a literature based course. Again, heavy on the reading. We read usually between four and five novels. All reading is done outside of class, um, and all activities are done inside of class, including um, paper writing and the multimodal projects. Um, both will require a portfolio of all of your work. Um, this is a very self-driven class and self-motivated. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or DM me on Teams, and I look forward to having you next year. Hi, everyone. I'm here to talk to you uh, about an advanced English course that I teach. It's called Sustainable Democratic Societies, and it's available to grade 11 students here at the Biotechnology High School. My name is Michael Ewing, and together we explore two concepts, democracy and sustainability. On the one hand, what is democracy? What is the state of our democracy in our country today? Is our democracy working for everyone? 
And then on the other, what is sustainability? Is it limited to environmental sustainability or is it something more? What can we do to encourage people to pursue sustainability? We put those concepts together. For example, how can we use the democratic process to promote sustainability? Is the democratic process adequate to promote sustainability? The specific texts that we read vary from year to year, depending on your interest and current events. For example, this past semester, we took advantage of the fact that it was a presidential election year and we composed projects reflecting that. You're required to come up with four composition projects. You formulate a question and then write something that answers that question. Our projects are not limited to writing. We do have one project that is multimodal. For that project, you not only present in written form, but also orally as well as visually. The written, oral, and visual, and sometimes physical elements come together to form one project. This is usually my students' favorite project. Should you take this class? Yes. Especially if you want to improve your writing. Because we pursue the writing process so intensely, you will be a better writer and thinker by the end of this class. While the syllabus for your class will differ, I encourage you to take a look at the most recent syllabus to get a sense of our expectations. Let me know if you have any questions. Hi, I'm Ms. Helk. I'm the ECE staff teacher. This is a four credit dual enrollment course through UConn. In this class, we collect, analyze, and interpret data from the real world and also from scientific studies. Introduction to American Studies uh, in the Aero School at Fairchild Wheeler. I'm an English teacher and a history teacher, but this is not a history class, nor is it an English class. We may look at things through a historic lens or through a literary lens, but it's not solely a history class or an English class. Instead, American Studies um, involves multiple disciplines, things like history, literature, sociology, economics, politics, art, uh, popular culture, etc., etc. Um, American studies is exactly what it sounds like. We study what it means to be an American uh, and what it means to live you know, in the Americas, whether that's North America, South America, and just the United States of America. Uh, this is primarily a reading class, so if reading is not your strength, I wouldn't advise it. Um, we read texts from a lot of those different disciplines that I've mentioned, and so it can be a lot. 
Uh, but unlike most of the classes that you take in high school, um, we have no set curriculum, no we must learn these eight facts uh, before the semester is over. So it gives me a lot of leeway uh, to take us in the direction that we might want to go uh, as a class as we study um, America and what it means to be American. So if you like to read, uh, you might want to check out this class. is the fact that it is a, um, a dual enrollment college accredited history class. Um, I tend to get a lot more highly motivated, high achieving students who come in here um, to take the class who aren't really afraid of getting their hands dirty with, um, with some paper writing and some, some document analysis, which is a little bit different than like the project based DBQ approach that you normally get during the, um, the AP US history class. Um, the other good thing about the class is because it is a campus-wide class, we get students in here from, from all over uh, Fairchild, which obviously gives it a little different vibe than your traditional Fairchild class, where you're seeing like the same people and the same teachers day in and, and, and day out. And I think my, my students really do kind of like that break from the norm a little bit, where they get to, um, you know, to meet different students and work in different groups with different people um, than, than they might have, have normally been. So, uh, if you're not afraid to, to write a little bit, if you're not afraid of a challenge, please um, do check out the class. Um, come up to the top floor bio, say hi, or shoot me an email or, or a text message. Um, you won't regret it if you take my class. My, my students um, typically are really happy that they chose to take this class. You just got to get over that initial like, trepidation of, oh my God, why am I signing up for a UConn history class when I'm in 11th or 12th grade? Once you do that, you'll be fine. You'll be glad that you did it. Um, and I look forward to meeting you all when the time comes. Hope this finds you well. Uh, we'll talk soon. Hi, new friends. My name is Ms. Crudale, and I teach a lot of courses, but right now I'm going to be telling you about ECE Chemistry, which is a dual enrollment course for UConn. So what to expect from the regular 10th grade chemistry experience here at Fairchild versus ECE chemistry. In ECE chemistry, we definitely cover topics in more detail. We probably hit on every single thing you've done in 10th grade chemistry within the first month or month and a half. At that point, we move forward with brand new topics that you probably have never heard of, and everyone is starting with the same clean blank slate. I do start all topics from a very basic level, so I don't assume any background knowledge when teaching the course, which is an important piece of how I go through. Um, there is a heavy weight on exams, so there are three major exams and one final, which out of a thousand total points for the course make up 70%, roughly 70% of the entire semester grade. There are other grades that are in there, homeworks, labs, and quizzes that will contribute to your grade and can definitely make or break a student's performance in the class. And then the course is also math and problem solving heavy. So what to expect? Challenge interest in discussion. So this is definitely, from what I hear from students, one of the most challenging courses offered at Fairchild. And I think that's because it favors not the math brains or not just the science brains or not just the humanities brains. It favors anybody who is strong in both of those areas, math and reading. It is a lot of problem solving, but in order to be able to solve the problems mathematically, you need to first access that material using your reading and comprehension skills. The content though is really interesting, and I like this course the most because it helps students make connections in other classes. Those connections really help students make that click moment in their brains where they're like, oh my gosh, that's why that works. That's why my physics teacher told me this. That's why my biology teacher told me this. And it kind of brings everything together. And then I think my most favorite part of the course is that we're all learning together. We have a lot of great discussions. We have a lot of great question and answer sessions. We have a lot of fun. So I hope you choose to take the course and I will see you in the fall. 
Hi friends, my name is Miss Crudell and I'm going to be telling you about ECE Environmental Science, which is a dual enrollment course through UConn. So some things to be excited about. The course is completely revamped from the last time it was offered in the spring of 2019. This course is gonna incorporate hands-on real world projects where we really dive into the classroom content in a real and tangible way. We're gonna be developing the course together. So whatever your interests are, whether it's climate change or populations or biodiversity, that stuff is going to drive our decisions in the class and determine what we spend our time on. So things to expect when signing up for ECE Environmental. Lots of new information. This course is entirely interdisciplinary. You have statistics, biology, chemistry, um, all of these sciences and maths are going to come together to make a super course. So I really hope that you choose to take ECE Environmental and I'll see you in the spring.